Welcome, builders of the internet. My name is Jessa, and I love exploring the relationship between construction and mental health. Construction projects are notorious for producing lots of sound, and rather fittingly, there's some construction works going on right outside my house. So today I'm going to be talking about this noise, how it has an impact on people's health, and some potential solutions for these issues. As always, you can find my sources and timestamps in the description. It's building on my mind. Why is construction so noisy? This first question may seem a bit obvious, but I just wanted to ensure we're all on the same page for what constitutes as construction noise before we get started. Noise is defined as unwanted sound and is measured on a decibel scale, which matches the ear sensitivity to sound. A whisper is around 30 decibels and power tools are usually between 90 to 110 decibels. There is the Noise Policy Statement for England, the NPSE, which has three main facets to noise pollution. One, environmental noise, including noise from transportation sources. Two, neighbour noise, from inside and outside people's houses, and three, neighbourhood noise, noise from the community, which includes industrial, that from businesses, entertainment, random street noises, and of course, construction. The construction industry can potentially fall into all three of these categories, with lots of deliveries and vehicles moving to and from sites, potential repairs and extension works within people's homes, and of course, the nature of construction work itself, with lots of loud tools and machinery being used. Construction sites are constantly changing as the works develop and require different equipment, so with this, the types of noise and the volume itself will vary considerably too. In Washington state, an average exposure of 85 decibels is allowed over an eight hour shift, and for each 5 decibels above, the allowed exposure time is cut in half. For example, you could be exposed to 90 decibels for 4 hours, 95 decibels for 2 hours, and so on. If you want reference for how loud this is, 60 decibels is that of a normal conversation, 90 decibels is that of a lawnmower, and 110 is that of a chainsaw. If you're still confused about what construction noise is, You're welcome. <laughs> Effects of construction noise on construction workers. Based on research for workers in different trades, the average level of sound that employees on site are exposed to is about 81.4 decibels, but a third of all the measurements that were taken were above 85 decibels where hearing protection is required. However, it was found that hearing protectors were worn for less than 40% of the time, and above 115 decibels, they were only actually worn about a third of the time. Some of the reasons for this lack of protection is that often these exceptionally loud sounds last a much shorter period of time, so perhaps not all workers will necessarily have been given enough time or warning to put on the relevant hearing protectors. If someone is exposed to sound that is both loud and long enough, it can damage the nerves in the inner ear, resulting in permanent loss of hearing and some other effects which include social isolation, because communication becomes a lot more difficult with damaged hearing. As well as this, there's increased risk of accidents and injuries on site, as people fail to recognise warning signals. Generally, the outcome of noise-induced hearing loss results in a poorer quality of life with failure to distinguish similar sounding words, conversation can become more difficult, and even permanent tinnitus, which is a ringing or humming sound in the ears, where the distress from this condition can lead to other problems, including a loss of sleep and depression. Effects of construction noise on the general public. Construction noise, of course, affects people who aren't directly working on site too namely members of the public who may live or work nearby. Of course, there are a lot of similar effects of noise on the general public as construction workers. If it's too loud, they can also develop nerve or hearing damage, but it tends to be that residents are exposed to a lower decibel level. In addition to hearing damage, some studies have taken a closer look at the mental well-being effects on residents and have come with the result that, unsurprisingly, 
Levels of annoyance and general dissatisfaction increases the closer that residents are to the building sites. Due to the nature of interfering sound waves, noise was amplified from lower up to even the middle floors of apartment blocks. Then the annoyance gradually gets lower the higher up you get. When there is excessive noise, this can trigger the fight or flight part of someone's brain, which results in elevated levels of stress and anxiety and in some cases can even lead to heart problems. But more often, this increased level of stress leads to instances of depression and other mental health issues. Other potential effects on those in close proximity to building sites includes interference with behaviour, communication and academics. For behaviour interference, if noise starts early in the morning, it can cause changes in sleep patterns where people might get lighter sleep as they wake up to it. There are other consequences such as increased intake of sleeping pills, reduced social behaviours by being, say, less helpful and less open to casual interaction. When it comes to communication, construction noise makes it difficult to hear others and it can be harder being heard yourself, so conversations both in person and on the phone are more difficult. Then lastly, I'll talk about academic performance. With construction noise being a distraction, interrupting thoughts and conversation, it can understandably make activities such as reading and studying more difficult. Studies have also found that there is not actually a significant difference in grade point average, but that doesn't stop the fact that there could be additional difficulty that students may have to face. Solutions Various sources have claimed that the impacts of the noise could be getting worse over time because as population density in, say, city areas increase, this means that more individuals are becoming exposed to the noise, making effective solutions all the more important. One solution is to limit the extent of noise that construction sites are allowed to make. For example, in England, this can be found within the building regulations, part E, and local authorities tend to restrict working hours and can limit certain types of construction from being used. If unreasonable noise disturbance is found and the problem persists after warnings, there can be harsh penalties, with people being taken to court and fined up to £5,000. Another way to reduce noise is using improved technology with lower noise emissions regularly servicing this machinery so it lasts longer, and limiting how long noisy activities can go on for, especially when above critical levels. This can only achieve so much with current financial and technological restraints, but this can be helped further by locating any noisy plant, such as generators and pumps, and putting them in more isolated areas that are further away from main works areas and local residents. Where possible, it's recommended to carry out any loud activity in insulated rooms, but where this isn't possible, noise enclosing cabins can also be brought on site. The last solution I'll talk about today is communication in advance of being on site. If there are going to be multiple people operating at one time, it's important to give warning of the estimated times of activities so that the site manager can coordinate and ensure that not too much noise is happening at once. Thank you for watching this video. Noise is pretty inevitable, not just through construction, but also through traffic, neighbours, etc. It can be incredibly annoying. I currently have construction noises happening right outside, as you may have heard in the background, and it's 10pm, yay, but my mentality is just to let them get on with it and hopefully they can be done sooner. That's all I have to say about construction and mental health for now. I hope it helped build on your mind. Thanks for watching this channel, it's building on my mind. Check out my other videos, but first hit the bell and comment, like, subscribe. Peace it really helps with you.